it's a form manager term for the Qatar Flag. Grand Prix. In practice one, the single practice session before qualifying is 14th and 15th, but again, we weren't really pushing because we're using more engines and I'm told that we're only about 10 million above the cost cap, so we can't really afford new engines anyway, and we can't afford it because of grid penalties in the title fight. Qualifying is coming up, and we're close now to finding out how the drivers will line up on the grid for the sprint. Just like normal qualifying, the session this weekend will be divided into Q1, Q2 and Q3, with the best times determining the grid for the sprint. Now, Karun, you and I were actually just talking about that man there, Max Verstappen. How do you think he'll be feeling today? They said a great lap in practice, so you can only imagine how good they're feeling going into qualifying. But the big question is, will they be able to keep this performance up? Stay with us as we see who can deliver on motorsport's biggest stage. Into Q1, ready to do laps on the set of soft tyre, the first lap in Q1. Ignore that we're 23 seconds off. Um, I sent them out on a run on inters just so they gain confidence because they set personal, personal best sectors and they gain confidence. Anyway, green and green through the first sector, so not purple, which is a little bit annoying because we have to be quickest every race now if we want a chance in the championship which we are about 30 points behind on. Green and green again, so not purple, but it's only Q1, so it's not that deep. Just as long as we get through, then that's okay. Come around the final corner, up to the line, what's it gonna be? So 122.6 for George, and it's a 123 something for Lewis. So, yeah, that's not great, but it's, if it's enough to get through, it's enough to get through. Onwards to Q2. Better now, starting a lap. Again, done an Inter's lap. Much better Inter's lap this time. We're only 12 seconds up. But, doesn't matter about the Inter's lap. It just matters about the shot we do on dry compounder tyres. Which, at the moment, is looking... George is two tenths quicker than Lewis. Why has George been quicker than Lewis in the first two sessions, please? Does Lewis know he's got a championship to fight for? Anyway. Uh, Norris and Sonoda finish P5 and P6. And first finish P1. Russell goes up to the line. It's a 22.8. Lewis does a 23.1. So that's it. F1 Manager 23 is coming, uh, 24 is coming out very soon. You can watch that live on my Twitch on Mega Manager Gamer. I don't know if that's the YouTube. It's Mega Gamer 8888 on Twitch. Make sure to follow. Fourth and eighth, that do will get us through. First run on the fresh dry compound tires because we have three dry sets, but we're going to only use two. Three fresh dry softs. Yeah, we're only using it two because you can only fit two runs in in Q3. Anyway, going through the first sector. Lewis Purple. Lewis is now starting to turn up the wick. I can feel that he's quicker than George now. We're back and ready to fight. Lewis done a 26 1. He's actually just been robbed or taken away, sorry, of the fastest sector. Someone's nicked it off me. Set a quicker sector. In both sectors now than George. Lewis is back. It might not it might be because we've sent Lewis out in the fresh air. Whereas the previous two sessions we sent George out in the fresh air anyway. Uh, so Lewis with a 228. So George half a second off. That's not like George. As we've sent both drivers now out in quite a big pocket of fresh air. Just because I felt like that's what was hindering them. Lewis is actually quicker than both Red Bulls at this stage. And only 18,000 off of the Ferrari in front of him, of Charles Leclerc. Because Leclerc is still George's title rival. George is about 30 points off him. George's gone green in the first sector. Lewis just needs to beat Max. That's what we need to do. George needs to beat Leclerc, which seems harder than Lewis beating Max, to be honest. Although Lewis has gone yellow for the first sector. George has gone green and green. 
for both the first and the second sector. He's going to whiz around the final corner now up to line. What's it going to be from him? It is a 122.6. Puts him in front of Gasly only. No, I don't think he moved place actually. No, he did move place. He got Gasly. He was seventh. As Lewis is on a yellow, yellow, he now does a 23 0. Nothing gained for that. Verstappen P1. So Lewis is genuinely in the mud. Perez goes P3. It's P5 and P6 for us. We have no pace. No pace at all compared to the top two. But we're quite a bit quicker than third, uh, sixth. Uh, seven, sorry, but yeah. That's qualifying, man. And practice to last and second to last, just making sure the drivers get confident with the track because they weren't very in qualifying, so just getting confident with the track, confident with the setup. 92% driver starting confidence and 88 for Lewis weekend, into the sprint. The sprint set to spice up today's events. The action is set to be fast and furious in this one, with each driver well aware that a good performance will secure themselves a strong place on the grid. It's not only the starting grid decided here though. The top finishers in the sprint have the chance to score crucial championship points. But just who will be the fastest around LaSalle? We'll find out in today's sprint. The sprint today sees the drivers tackle 19 laps of the LaSalle International Circuit. It's a fast track here in Qatar. Expect to see the pack fight it out, trading places to improve their chances of scoring more championship points. Well then folks, it's time to get going. We're ready for the sprint here in Qatar. And it's lights out, and away we go! And indeed it is the lights out, and here we go, golf and mediums with both drivers. Quite a few have gone soft, but the game said they wouldn't last the whole race. So, as George is down to 8th, quickly back up to 6th though, overtaking on Gazi, and I don't know who he overtook before that. As Lewis now makes a dab on on the first 4th place, on lap 14. And on lap 16, Lewis gets Perez. And on lap 7, uh, 16 as well, Lewis is fighting Science. Science gets him back. Lewis harvests just so he's got enough ERS down the straights. And George now gets P4 ahead of Perez. Lewis dive on Science for second. And George does the same thing for third. So with no pace, we're going to get second and third in the sprint as Alonso has a puncture. And Hulkenberg now all by punctures. And our tyres were the only ones to have lasted. So it's P2, P2 and P3 in the sprint. That sprint was less than a minute long, which just shows how poor it was. But that's some good points and damage limitation in the sprint race. Hard to finish in the points in today's sprint. Yeah, this was a really clever bit of strategy, and it's great to see that pay off. It's race day and final preparations are underway. Formula One first came to Qatar in 2021. Lewis Hamilton managed to pick up the victory and in doing so claimed LaSalle as his 30th different Grand Prix winning circuit. There are a few clouds here tonight, but the sky remains mostly clear. Will it stay this way or will the weather throw a spanner in the works? Let's see what lies ahead for us then with today's race in LaSalle. I shouldn't have used the hards in practice too, but we're going to do a normal push-in stint, a push-in hard stint and a push-in medium stint, and we're going to do the same for Lewis, but we're going to do a medium, medium hard, George is doing a medium hard, medium. continues to build as we approach the Qatar Grand Prix. Our attention shifts to Lewis Hamilton and what he can produce in this race. They're in second place on the grid, but that could so easily change in the first few seconds after lights out. But just what will happen here, your guess is as good as mine. We're all 
set here in the sale. And it slides out, and away we go. And it is pedal to that one, it is go, 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 go. As the great George Morgan would say. Anyway, Lewis and George fighting for third place. Max goes incredibly wide for some reason, takes the high line to block George. As Lewis and George now both get overtaken by Perez. George gets overtaken by Leclerc. And this is just going to be the reverse of the sprint race as Lewis now gets Perez. Leclerc comes into the pit lane on lap 15 for a set of medium tyres. Hamilton gets re overtaken by Perez. Going into turn nine. As you can see here. And Perez completes the overtake. Fair play, decent move. Verstappen comes into the pits on lap 19 for a set of mediums. It's a decently slow stop, to be fair. And Lewis comes into the pits on lap 22. George is going to go a lot longer to 23 as Lewis comes into the pits for another set of mediums. But it's a slow stop. It is a slow stop and the pit lane crew were very tired. Somehow they've been tired all year despite consistently, consistently giving us three second pit stops. As George pits on lap 23 and comes up P7. Lewis gets Gasly which I skipped forward because he just wasn't overtaking. Science gets Lewis. Lewis gets back past Science before the DRS zone. George goes around the outside of Gasly. Checo comes in the pit to the pits again on lap 35 for a set of mediums. Lewis gets in second as Leclerc comes into the pits. Hamilton comes into the pits on lap 39. George is a whole pit stop off for Staffan. And Lewis comes out just behind Stroll. With a much better pit stop though this time. Lewis is onto the hearts and he's pushing. George is pushing on the hearts and he's now coming in for an aggressive stint on mediums. And he's actually undercut Max, but Lewis needs seven seconds to get in the pit window of Max and he'll just fly past us when he comes out anyway. So we just gotta try and get on the podium or something to do damage limitation work as much as possible. But we have to beat science. Lewis goes up into P3. Ahead of Perez, it's going to be Verstappen, Leclerc, Hamilton, Perez, Russell. Disappointing, but we only lost 11 points. That's not too bad. The drivers make their way back to the pit lane, and there we've got Daniel Ricciardo. With a P17 finish, it's a long distance from the points. And Lewis Hamilton takes to the podium once more, adding yet another trophy to his legacy. The trophy cabinet must be full by now. That's 10 podiums this year, a masterful achievement. And that picture right there brings together the podium finishers for the Qatar Grand Prix. And as proceedings start to wind down here, what will Mercedes have made of this result, Karu? They'd certainly be pleased to have made the podium. A job well done for sure. So then, our time in LaSalle is now up. Coming up next, we'll be crossing the pond all the way to Texas for the twists and turns of the United States Grand Prix. It's obviously from second to third, and third to fifth is not the race you want for both your drivers but we never look quick enough in the sprint race anyway and to get a podium i'm happy with that i'm happy with that our strategy to pay dividends at the end but the gap in the championship has increased to 26 points so it wasn't quite 30 as we started this weekend i was wrong but the gap has increased to 26 points we've got to have as we design an underfloor and I'm getting closer to this cost cap, but I don't care, I want the championship. And a design of the front wing. Uh, we need, we need these late race upgrades to stay in contention with Red Bull. As we're going to sign Jonathan Wheatley to see if we can try and do anything on the pit stops. 
we're getting rid of Ron Meadows just because this guy's a one rating better. Hoping he can do something a little bit better. As he rejects our first contract of 300 grand because I don't know how much these guys want. So I'm going to try and pay him 1.5 million, which we send through. And he's very, very happy with. So we will have Jonathan Wheatley for next season. We'll also have GP for next season. Max is engineer in real life, who's currently at Ferrari. And we have Frederick Vesti for next season in the reserve driver role. Make sure to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitch, MegaGamer8888.